Ray Marakison and I and others began the Banff classification 20 years ago, our objectives were fairly simple and only represent a small fraction of the things that then evolved from the classification in the long run. In the beginning, we knew that it was a good thing to do from the point of view of patient care, that standardization of kidney transplant pathology worldwide would allow one to have the very best ideas of science applied in a standardized way where everybody was speaking the same language. And it also allowed science to advance more quickly that we all understood things in a similar way, in a similar configuration. So obviously that was desirable. From an academic point of view, it was quite a challenge to standardize things and to maintain intellectual freedom. And yet that is obviously desirable. And I'm quite proud of the fact that we have managed to do that so that people are always free to bring new ideas and we're bringing good new ideas and adding them to the classification almost constantly but we are able to maintain a kind of stability of the classification over a period of time and then make discrete changes that are justifiable and then we uh, have a, an expanded modified classification that now includes more ideas, more things that enhance patient care, uh, make more precise diagnoses of what's going wrong when the grafted organ fails, and so on. So it, it's, it's obviously desirable. So those were the things that we knew about in the beginning, but quite a few things happened that we did not anticipate. One is that we found that one could extend the lessons from the kidney transplant classification to many other solid organs, that many of the same concepts apply. So you could apply the kidney ideas to liver, heart, lung, pancreas, uh, small bowel, composite tissue graft. And, and so you don't have to begin really from scratch for those other organs. We already had an idea of what a classification should be like, what some of its characteristics should be. So we can move quite quickly to create classifications of transplant pathology in those other transplanted organs. Another unanticipated facet was the fact that young people frequently orient their whole careers around the Banff classification. And, and it has a kind of importance there in terms of career pathways and training and certification. This is another feature of the classification we did not anticipate in the beginning. And finally, maybe the most exciting thing is the, the embrace that the classification has received from regulatory agencies that have come to regard reading by the Banff classification by a central pathologist as a desirable endpoint for clinical trials. So there have been many facets that have developed in the Banff classification in the past 20 years. And this includes such things as the working groups, which we could never have anticipated in the beginning, and that focus on individual problems and, and solve them and then add that facet to the classification. One can then look ahead, and it's quite exciting to think about what may occur in the next 20 years. And one can anticipate the incorporation of genomics, gene chip data into the classification, uh, morphometry, where we'd have continuous uh, numerical measurements, not just semi-quantitation, and genomics, uh, proteomics, uh, many other areas, including the idea of probability, and what do we really mean when we say that the diagnosis is this. How can we have diagnostic categories that don't leave out things, that don't create a kind of fictional world that doesn't really exist? Categories of diagnoses that reflect the real world as we now understand it through, through the advances of science. So these are the things that one can anticipate will occur in the next 20 years. And then you can think of a kind of balance between that, the pace of that, and the pace of elimination of transplantation 
when we become able to grow organs from stem cells. And at some point in the next 20 years, that will probably replace transplantation. But by that time, we'll be very far along in, in, in terms of all the things that have developed in the Banff classification. Will the pathologist have a role in that phase when we're growing organs? Yes, I certainly think so. For instance, if you look at the bioengineered bladders at the moment, they're really lumpy and ugly compared to a normal bladder. So there, there, there's still abnormalities that one can have even when you're growing organs from stem cells. Uh, genetic uh, engineering isn't perfect. There will be the need for laboratory physicians to help manage that part of medical science just like they are in transplantation today. So it's very exciting to think about everything that will come with the future in the next 20 years.